Okay, I'm sitting here this afternoon with a very unusual, I guess unusual, and a very important guest uh, for Sermon Audio. Um, and I hope that it will be a blessing. We did another interview with this guest on TalkShoe and it didn't come out very good. So we're going to do it again and hopefully it will be more clear. I have uh, as a guest this afternoon my son and my only son Mark Phillips and today is his big 4-0 birthday <laughs> and uh, he was born in 1976 March 8th and so Mark welcome to the uh, welcome to the program thank you um, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through some of Mark's life and uh, before I get started, I'm just going to give a little summary. You know, a lot of people on Sermon Audio know that Mark has a very rare brain degenerative disease. And he's been, he's had it since he was, he was actually diagnosed when he was uh, 17 with this disease. So it's been over 20 years. He, uh, 17, 27, 37. Um, 20, 23 years ago. It's a long time. And he's been with us the last 40 years, but he's been with us with this brain degenerative disease the last 23 years. And it has been quite a journey for all of us. Mark, Rosette, and myself, and of course the rest of the family has, had, has, has been affected as well. Um, just to give an overview, Mark, uh, uh, when he was he was working, uh, he had graduated from high school, had gotten his diploma from the Christian Liberty Academy in Chicago, and we were had homeschooled him, and he was working part time at a Burger King, and came home one night and said he was having a clicking sensation in his head, and within 24 hours he was in a comatose. Uh, situation in a hospital and had a massive overproduction of dopamine in his brain and it caused some brain damage and um, you know it resulted in this uh, this uh, condition that he's had to live with the rest of his life which the actual uh, the actual how it works itself out is Mark uh, much of his life is very, very disoriented. His thoughts become muddled and confused. And to uh, get his thoughts together, he writes uh, hundreds and hundreds of pages every month. I think we go through about five to six spiral notebooks a month, probably 600 pages a month, in trying to get his thoughts in alignment. And uh, he's on some inhibitor medication to slow down the production of his dopamine in his brain but the Lord has been merciful through it all and uh, and uh, we see he still struggles and sometimes he despairs over not having a normal life like anyone would not having a normal job not having a wife not having you know children and uh, and so, anyway, I'm just going to start. Uh, I'm going to now, Mark. I will tell you his uh, condition today is he's got a pretty clear mind this afternoon, um, but he does not. He's not real talkative. Uh, oftentimes, he'll answer a question yes or no. It's hard to get him to elaborate. Um, so understand it's part of the condition, but I'll do the best I can to fill in the blanks. Um, so again, Mark, welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, Mark, uh, again, uh, what is your birth date? March 8, 1976. Okay. And Mark, where, uh, what city were you born in? Kansas City, Missouri. And do you remember the name of the hospital? St. Mary's Hospital. I was born at 556 p.m. Okay. <laughs> do you remember the actual yeah. time? Okay. And uh, was that a Catholic hospital? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Came into the world in the Catholic's hands, huh? Yeah. 
Oh. Now, do you remember the the first city that we lived in, the little city that we lived in on Sagamore? That was Prairie Village. Right. Kansas. Prairie Village, Kansas. And uh, what are some of the first things that you remember as a child? Having toys and G.I. Joe's and Mass the Universe. Master the Universe. That was later, I guess. Okay. And then the next place we moved, we, we moved several times throughout mm -hmm. our adult lives. Now, where was the next place we moved to? Was it Sagamore? No, that was, was Leewood. Leewood, yeah. okay. And uh, what do you remember about the house in Leewood? Well, I remember we had dog named Rags. Okay. Rags. Rags, okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, so you, uh, when you went to kindergarten, do you remember what your kindergarten teacher's name was? Mrs. Henderson. Mrs. Henderson. Okay. Your mind's working good today, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, then we moved and you started uh, first, uh, second, well, first and second grade at what school was that? Or was it just first grade? It was kindergarten and then uh, I guess. No, oh, Mrs. Henderson was kindergarten, but where was the next school that you went to in first grade? Comanche, I think. Okay, and what was your teacher's name there? Mrs. Gray, and she liked to use her pointed finger and point, <laughs> and point and point people and scold people that way. Scold people by pointing yeah. her finger? Being okay. strict, and she was too strict. Was she? Yeah. And then we moved out to Latha, Kansas, mm -hmm. and what was the name of that first school that you went to out there? Ridgeview. Ridgeview Elementary. And uh, then, do you remember your teacher at Ridgeview? Mrs. Johnson. Mrs. Johnson. Mm -hmm. How was she? I liked her as a teacher. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. And then uh, you you went to Central Elementary, and who was your teacher there? Dan Doolittle. <laughs> Van? Dan? Dan. Dan. Dan yeah. Doolittle. Huh? How was Dan? He was fine. Really? I you think liked he made a bit of leap from the drum or something. Oh. And then you also had another teacher, male teacher. What was it? Bill Molden. Bill Molden. Yeah. And what do you think of him? Oh, I liked him. Yeah. He was Russian tea he had in class. <laughs> Russian yeah. tea, okay. Yeah, also he had a teacher called Miss Devine and Mrs. Smith. Oh, wow. So you went there for quite a while. Yeah. So what do you think of Miss Devine? I liked her. She really? was married to, to a and Miss Smith or something. Really? And yeah. what about Mrs. Smith? I liked her too. So you really liked all your teachers uh, at Central. Yeah. Well, that's good. Um, now, when you were taking, like, uh, you know, some of your classes, your math classes, and, well, especially in your science classes, did they teach you that the uh, planets and the Earth uh, revolved around the sun? Yes. Did they? Yes, they did. So they didn't teach you that the Earth was stationary? No. Oh, interesting. What do you think about that? Oh, that's different. <laughs> yeah. Do you agree with that? No. You don't? No. Why not? The Bible says it. Really? Okay, well that's interesting. You picked up on that. Mm -hmm. um, now, when you were coming up, we went to different churches. Um, you know, uh, before we met the Sovereignty of God people, what are some of the churches you remember being brought up in? Assembly of God and the Sight of Christ. We went there one time or something, you know, so the Church of God Holiness and the, maybe United Methodist Church one time or something. And we, we didn't, I guess. We went to a lot of churches, didn't we? Baptist Church one time, and certain yeah. Baptist churches. So. Yeah. We went to, um, do you remember when we went to um, Rosedale Church of God Holiness? Yes. Do you remember yeah. Summit View Church of uh, Nazarene? Yes, okay. And uh, we also went to uh, Sheffield Assembly of God. Remember that? Yeah. And uh, do you remember going to um, uh, 
Unity? Uh-huh. What did you think of Unity? Unity was evil. It's plain evil. <laughs> That's it's right. Really evil. Now, how did you come to the conclusion that Unity was evil? They worship. They worship Satan. Why do you say that? I think they did because they said they were a heart of one church, but they just they had a cold going on. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> well, then we, uh, after Olathe, we moved out to a little town. What was the name of that town? Hitsville. Hitsville, mm-hmm. Missouri. And uh, you started attending. Junior High, where was that? Holden Junior High, Holden, Missouri. Holden, Missouri. Okay, and um, what do you think of that school? Oh, that school was kind of different. Kind what of do you think? Memories. And you, I remember you said you met someone there that was really into. Uh, you felt like he was uh, in the cold. Yeah. Yeah. And so the same time mom and I started really struggling with some of the things that we've been taught hadn't we? Yeah. And we met someone that introduced me to a book, The Sovereignty of God. Do you remember who that was? Gary Hackett. Gary Hackett. And so as a result, mom and I started having some problems with the public school you were in, didn't we? Uh, so what happened? I went, uh, you guys, mom taught me homeschool. We both taught you. Remember, so I taught a class. Yeah. And what was the uh, curriculum? Christian Liberty at uh, Becca Books. Christian Liberty Academy and uh-huh. uh, Becca uh-huh. Books. Uh-huh. And uh, do you really remember, like, when they were teaching, when when you were when we were teaching you about the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence and all that? Uh, did they teach you that? That that was a pretty much uh, a Christian document. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. What about the founding fathers? Uh huh. The same they, thing. But they were Christians. Yes. Yeah. You come to realize that's not true, right? Yeah. Right. Well, that's interesting, Mark. Um, now you uh, after you graduated. From high school, like I've said, well, you had several jobs throughout high school. You you worked uh, as a volunteer. You want to talk about where that was at and what you did? As junior volunteer at the hospital, reorganized Latter Day Saints Hospital in Missouri. <laughs> okay, reorganized Latter Day Saints Hospital. It's junior page, or what they call them. So you were born in a Catholic hospital, and you yeah. worked in an RLDS <laughs> hospital. Oh my! And you went to Unity. Yeah. Oh my, my! And all these other Armenian churches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you also worked some other places. Where else did you work when you were in high school? Uh, food for less. Okay. Uh, what did you do there? Push the carts around. Okay. <laughs> and also clean the. Where the food was, you know, where the people throw the oh, food uh, was clogged. And oh, okay. Them, them, spraying up the bottle. And the okay. Stuff. And then you... Also stock food, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you, um, you got a job at Burger King. What did you do at Burger King? Made Whoppers. <laughs> made hamburgers. So, uh, Whoppers, huh? Took the trays with certain people that won the food and okay. go in the area of Burger King and swept the floor. And, okay. You know. And that's when you started having your difficulties, wasn't it? Yeah. And you started having problems with um, with your mind, didn't you? Yeah. Your brain. Uh-huh. And uh, you started having what you would have described as clicking. A clicking sensation in my head. Wow, that must have been strange. Yeah, it was strange. It doesn't sound like a gun. It almost sound like a gun. Huh. It sound like. That must have been scary. It was. And then a short time later, you ended up in the hospital. And uh-huh. uh, what do you think was going on? Well, maybe uh, possibly uh, that evil activity, the spiritual one. Forces I was fighting, but the you you were thinking it might be evil, but yet it was registering. May have been with my physical. Mute. May have been with my mute button. 
it was physical though, wasn't it? Yeah. You were having physical problems. Uh -huh. Your brain wasn't working right. Yeah. But you were trying to trying to figure it out, right? Uh -huh. And uh, so you ended up having to get all kind of tests, didn't you? Uh -huh. You had MRIs. Yeah. And you had neurologists looking at uh -huh. you and blood tests, yeah. and they found out that your brain was. Uh, making way too much what? Dopamine. Dopamine. And so they gave you some medication to try to slow that down, right? Yeah. And you're still on that medication today. Uh -huh. um, you know, and you, you got, before all this happened, I mean, in the midst of all this, before we could figure out what was going on, you actually left the house where you were living with us how many times and couldn't find your way home 19 19 times and mom and i were worried sick mm -hmm. about you and that's when we finally had to put you in a hospital didn't we yeah and uh it took quite a while and finally you were able to come home from the hospital and uh and uh you went through a lot of uh, confusion, didn't you? Uh -huh. Where you couldn't figure out what was going on, right? Yeah. And still today, you, I, in probably like out of five days a week, how many days of the week would you say are you in kind of a disoriented state? Out of out of seven days a week, how many days you think? Three. I've got to say. So about three days out of the seven, you're confused, aren't you? Yeah. Now you're having a good day today, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Now let's talk about the spiritual side. Uh, I know that you've been through a lot, and had a lot of questions as to why God would allow this to happen to you, and why you haven't been able to have a normal life and a normal family and a normal job and all that. Mm -hmm. How have you come to grips with it? Five points of two. <laughs> Five points of two, okay. Total depravity. Now, hold on, hold on, uh, just so people understand. Uh, I believe in the sovereignty of God. Okay. God's always in control. Well, that's good. And that's helped you through yes, this? Yes, Okay. Now, we can talk about, you know, uh, so in other words, what and tulip what does t stand for total prayer so you believe that you're totally depraved yes. you're a sinner yes wow that's so my life yeah. right still be a christian okay and uh what does you mean unlimited uh, uh, unconditional election okay and election means that you're what chosen for the foundation of the world. wow is everybody chosen before the foundation? No. no. And so what does um, I stand for? You know. I. Irresistible grace. What does that mean? God has grace on just his Christian people. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they can't resist it? No. No. Okay, well, sometimes they resist it, but he, he's usually, he's always, you know. Some. Yes. Okay. Well, what's P mean? Perseverance, perseverance of the saints. Okay. The, the Christian, the Christian like people are always going to rejoice in heaven. They're never going to get out of heaven. <laughs> okay. Well, that's quite a thing now. Mm -hmm. When did God call you? The foundation of the world. Yeah, but how old were you? Thirteen. When you were thirteen years old. Well, that's interesting, Mark. Um, so, do you have a free will? No. You don't have a free will? No. Huh. So, uh, can you prove that you don't have free will by give me a scripture that, that disproves free willism? Not of him that will for him to run God mercy. There you go. Well, um, so this has helped you a lot. Yeah. 
to realize that God is sovereign over even your salvation. Uh -huh. Whether I believe it or not, because God said well, it's going to be But wait a minute. Uh, the question is, do you believe it? Yes. Well, okay. So, all of the elect will believe in the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross for them, won't they? Yeah. Okay. But he didn't need anybody. Right. He doesn't need anybody, does he? No. No. Jesus okay. is the one with the body is chewing with his precious blood, Jesus Christ. Right. Very good. And uh, it's the only way to God the Father is what yeah. through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. right. That's Praise right. Of Jesus Christ. That's right. And um, so when it says when when he talks in John three to Nicodemus that the wind bloweth where it listeth, and no man knoweth the sound thereof, and that you must be born again. Um, do you believe that being born again precedes everything else, comes before everything else? I mean, in other words, before you believe or before you repent. Uh -huh. Okay. And you, and you've already said you believe that you're called or chosen. Uh -huh. Before the what? The foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. Well, that's, that's good. Um, so how do you, you know, see your future, Mark? I mean, how do you see um, you're 40 years old, and if you live another, you know, let's say you live to be 80 years old, another 40 years. Yeah. Uh, is this, so this is kind of your foundation as to how you're going to live out your next 40 years is just... Uh, subscribing and embracing in the sovereignty of God. Uh -huh. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, I appreciate you coming on the program today and sharing. Now, I'm going to just uh, open it up to you and let you make any kind of final remarks to people. Maybe be of encouragement, you know, to someone that might be listening that has a, a terminal illness or facing, you know, major pain or mental uh, frustration or maybe someone that has lost a family member or you know what would you have to say right now to someone that's struggling trust in grace the Lord Jesus Christ Jesus will die for your sins you know right right if you become a Christian like, you don't have to accept him you know, you already accept you so you're saying that uh, it's not something that they do, it's something that God does. Yeah. Well, that's true. I know that one of the scriptures that's been very helpful to me in embracing the doctrine of uh, the Bible, Christ, His atonement, in Calvary, is that all that the Father has given me will what? And all that come to me, what? Will know why is cast out yeah now mark is going to be doing some uh, we're going to be doing some daily bible studies uh, mark had done this with me a while back and and uh, i'm going to ask him to kind of rejoin me for some of these bible studies and we're going to kind of go through we're starting through the book of john i went through the first chapter of john yesterday and tomorrow we're going to start in the second chapter of john and we're going to try to do these daily Bible studies. Well, maybe not every day, but we're going to try to work through uh, these studies, and hopefully, it will also be helpful to those that listen in. Do you have anything else to say before we close out the broadcast? No. 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 Okay. Well, thank you for joining me, and uh, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to doing these Bible studies with you. You're welcome to tell me. All right.